Well, good evening, Sunday afternoon evening. It's good to see you. It's June the 7th, and we're here in the pastor study ready to bring you another uh, little Bible study here on Sunday evening. I certainly appreciate you joining with us tonight. Hey, the, the good, I guess is a good thing. This will be my last Sunday evening alone in the church uh, as we uh, are announcing today that we're entering into phase two this coming Sunday, June the 14th. Uh, we'll be having uh, back our normal Sunday evening services and Sunday evening services starting next Sunday at 6.30. Hey, we'll still be broadcasting live here on Facebook, uh, but it'll be in the sanctuary with our Sunday evening crowd. And so I hope you will certainly come, and uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, come and worship with us. Uh, again, next Sunday we'll be having 11 o'clock worship service in the sanctuary, practicing our social distancing and all that good stuff that we have been doing in Phase 1. But as we enter into Phase 2, we will add the Sunday night service. And so I'm excited about you coming and being a part of our Sunday night service next week, next Sunday night, 6.30, right here at Sherwood Forest. Uh, in our sanctuary. So please come and be a part of that uh, special service with us. Now before I get into uh, the Bible study tonight, uh, you know on occasions I give out a, a word of shout to somebody and tonight I want to give a special word of shout out to my dear wife. Uh, Dena and I will be married 24 years tomorrow and uh, I want to say happy anniversary to her for 24 years that lady has put up with me and some of you understand that uh, comment. So I shout out to her tonight before we get to the Bible study. I will let you know that uh, she has rearranged her schedule and tomorrow uh, we will be spending the day together so the office here at Sherwood Forest will be closed. Uh, but if you need me you can certainly get in, in touch with me through our cell phone but um, otherwise I'll not be in the office tomorrow. We're going to take some time off to just enjoy uh, being together with her and with one of our friends that is here with us and so uh, celebrating our anniversary. So anyways, want to give a shout out to, to Denna this evening. Well tonight uh, we're going to continue our study concerning the basics, what I'm calling the basics uh, and we're just using the letters of the alphabet to uh, do these things. Uh, tonight, uh, I review with you the fact that we've spent two weeks uh, studying the letter A, and that is the assurance of salvation. We have uh, we took a, a last Sunday night and talked a little bit about the assurance of salvation. Wednesday night, I concluded that uh, assurance of salvation. Tonight, I want to go to the letter B. The letter B, I say, stands for baptism. You see, I believe very much so that when a person becomes a Christian, when they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they should get their assurance of salvation, but they should follow the Lord Jesus, if possible, through the ordinance of the church that we know as, as baptism. And uh, I'm going to say a few things about baptism tonight and uh, read quite a few verses of Scripture to you in this study my plan is at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night to continue this study on baptism by answering some common questions that people have concerning the ordinance of baptism. So you can be looking forward to that next week, uh, this coming Wednesday night, I mean, at 6 o'clock when I'll answer questions concerning uh, a baptism. But uh, I hope you remember the day, I remember a time, uh, not only that you received Christ as your Savior, but when you were baptized, when you followed Him in the ordinance of baptism. I remember my very first time of administering baptism. There was an older lady in our church who came and her and her husband uh, were, were saved and they wanted to follow Jesus in baptism, which was the proper thing to do. They... Uh, met with me. I was the associate pastor and the the, uh, the pastor himself uh, had heart problems and he had turned all the baptisms over to me uh, based on his doctor's recommendations. And so one of the things that I do with candidates for baptism, I like to sit down and talk to them. 
go through uh, some things with them, and one of those things that I talk to them about is is baptism and what's going to what's going to take place in the bapt baptismal service. Well, back in those days, we did not have a uh, a baptistry in the church, and so we always went down to the Ohio River. And so we gathered on a Sunday afternoon following the morning worship service at the, uh, at the Ohio River and we made preparations to baptize this couple. Well, when it came to the lady, there was a few things that you ought to know, some things that she didn't tell me. Uh, one very important thing, and I, I won't tell you everything, but just this one important thing that she failed to mention to me in our counseling sessions together concerning baptism she failed to tell me that she was scared of water. I mean, tetrified of water, water, very scared of water. And so uh, we, she finally, she told me after, after the fact that she, uh, that she thanked me and thanked God that she was able to be baptized, but she was scared, absolutely scared of water. What was interesting, and this has haunted me, I guess, ever since that day, is when I baptized her, I, I got her into the, into the river and was able to put her down. But because of her fear of the water, which again, I remind you, I didn't know, when I put her down, she jumped. And about the time she jumped, she jumped up, and I, her face, her face never was baptized. Her face never went under the water. And that has bothered me all these years. Uh, you know, here I have, I have a lady that I helped uh, be saved, showed her the scriptures how she could be saved. She received her assurance of salvation. Then I went to baptize her, and uh, we were always taught, taught in college that it was a full immersion, and her face, her face never got baptized. Now, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, I, I didn't try to re-dunk her, try to re-baptize her, uh, or anything of that nature, but it, it's my, it was my very first experience in a baptism uh, of a local church and uh, that's you know she's scared of water and then her face didn't get uh, under the water but we're not going to hold that against her or are we going to make a big deal out of it it's interesting to me that the word baptize or baptism occurs a hundred times in the new testament and you know i've taught you before that when you see a reoccurring theme or a reoccurring a word or words or a form of a word in the Bible, you need to pay t close attention to it because it is, is really important. Well, obviously, baptism or to be baptized is an important doctrine found within the, found within the New Testament in the fact that it's spoken of a hundred times. So it's an important subject. The word or the ordinance of baptism starts in the Gospel of John, chapter number 3. At least that's where I'm going to start with you tonight, is in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. There was a forerunner to Jesus who was preaching to repent of your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His name was John the Baptist. Now, John was not a... Baptist per se, when you talk about, well, was he Church of God, was he Methodist, was he Nazarene, was he a Baptist, what kind of Baptist was he, was he Independent, was he Southern, was he Free Will Baptist, what was, what kind of Baptist was, no, the Greek word there means he was John the Baptizer, and he came and told people to repent of their sins, and then he would baptize them. Let me read to you from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And he said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and of a, lo a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out him Jerusalem and Judea and the regions around Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. 
And so I want you to get the picture here. G, uh, John the Baptist is out there baptizing in the River Jordan as people repented of their sins. By the way, they got that in the right order. You, you get saved, you repent of your sins, and then you follow the Lord uh, in, in baptism. Well, as John is out there baptizing those new converts, Jesus comes walking down the path towards the Jordan River. That brings us up to verse number 13 of, of this passage, or I, math, well, I turn over to Matthew 3 to be uh, in a different passage. Matthew chapter 3, coming up to verse 13, says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me? And Jesus answered, answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so Jesus comes along and he says to John, John, I have need to be baptized of you. Now, does this mean that Jesus had sinned and that he was repenting of his sin and, and he was following the example to be baptized? Absolutely not. Had Jesus sinned, he would have never been a, a, an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. What Jesus was doing, if you would, he was laying the groundwork for you and I to follow him in baptism. He was setting an example. He was putting forth the uh, doctrine and the ordinance of the church of baptism. You also notice in this passage of Matthew chapter 3 that the Trinity is, is there at the uh, baptism of Jesus. There's God the Father in verse 17 who speaks and says, Behold, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus, God the Son, was physically there. Jesus was there being baptized. And then there was the emblem of the Holy Spirit coming in the form of a dove. And so we see Jesus gives us the example of, that we're to be baptized following repentance of our sins. And then also, I want you to notice that in the New Testament, the Bible, then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Gospels, from this point on is basically silent when it comes to the subject of baptism until Jesus gives the Great Commission. After Jesus' baptism, until the Great Commission is given, the Bible in, in the Gospels is basically silent when it comes to the subject of baptism. But Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which is one of those great commission passages, Jesus came and he spake to his disciples. And here's what he said. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Notice what Jesus said. He said, go and teach them. That, that in the Greek basically translate, go make disciples. Or go tell them to repent of their sins. And when they do, then you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We then come out of the Gospels and we come to the book called Acts, the fifth book in the, in the New Testament. And in Acts chapter number 8, we have, a, we have an example of how this works, how a person is, is saved and then is baptized. Now, I apologize for reading such a lengthy passage because you know that I don't normally read uh, lengthy passages of Scripture. But I want you to get the picture. In Acts chapter 8, I'm going to read to you verses 26 through 39 so that you can see how this plays out, 
as Jesus told his disciples to go and to teach and to baptize. This is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Please listen as I read Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandeth thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so open not his mouth. In his humiliation, he, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare that his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. By the way, that's from Isaiah 53, verse number 7. I continue reading, starting in verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip saith, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Do you, do you see the uh, contrast or, or the order of events here in Acts chapter 8? There was a sinner by the name of, of uh, uh, the, the eunuch, the eunuch, the Ethiopian. And he was reading from the book of Isaiah. A prophecy scripture from Isaiah 53 concerning Jesus Christ. But he didn't understand all that he was reading. So the preacher Philip came along and preached Jesus unto him. They saw a body of water. And the eunuch said, What hinders me from being baptized? Now don't get the events mixed up. Because then Philip explained to him, If you believe in Jesus, then you can be baptized. And the eunuch said to Philip, I believe, verse 37, and I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Philip commanded the chariot to, eat, to stop. They got out and they went in to the water. And Philip baptized this eunuch. And then they got back in the chariot and the Spirit took Philip away. This passage of Acts chapter 8 tells me several things concerning baptism. Number one, it's biblical. Baptism is biblical. We don't just baptize people because it's a fun thing to do or it helps in our worship service. Baptism is biblical. Jesus taught it. Jesus was our example. And there's other examples throughout the scriptures concerning baptism. Baptism is biblical because it's a symbol of our decision to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. 
that we want to tell the world that we belong to him. Not only is baptism biblical, but baptism is basic. It's basic. I personally believe baptism is the first thing that ought to happen after a person gets saved, if physically possible. Now, we'll deal with this in one of the questions that I'll deal with on Wednesday night. And uh, I do not believe baptism is essential for salvation. But I certainly believe if you're physically able you ought to follow the Lord in baptism, in water baptism, after you're saved. Now, I know there's folks that get saved in the hospital and they die and never have the opportunity to go get baptized. And there's some that would say, well, that person never made it to heaven because they never were baptized. I don't believe that's what the Bible teaches. And we'll talk more about that on Wednesday night if you'll join us at 6 o'clock uh, here on the Facebook Live page. Uh, that'll be one of the questions that I'll deal with. But I really believe that if you've truly been born again, you ought to, it's basic that you follow the Lord Jesus in baptism. So not only is baptism biblical and it's basic, but I believe baptism is beneficial. It's beneficial. You'll notice, let me turn back to that passage of Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Did you notice what the Bible said in verse 39? It says that when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. Now here's what I want you to notice. I don't want you to miss this. The very last part of verse 39 says, And he, that is the eunuch, he went on his way rejoicing. You see, I believe it's beneficial, baptism is beneficial because it puts a joy in your heart knowing that you follow the example of Jesus being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So baptism, baptism is biblical, baptism is basic, and baptism is beneficial. Baptism, and I'm going to give you an illustration here in a moment, but baptism is a symbol of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, we read, For I delivered unto you first of all that which was I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, when we're baptized, we are buried with him in what we call, we are buried with him in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 6. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Now let me give some credit. This illustration I want to close with tonight comes out of Brother Rob Morgan's little uh, book uh, entitled Simple. And he talks about when he was in the pastorate, how he would talk to baptismal candidates and here's how he would talk to them uh, in their counseling session. It's a wonderful illustration and I'm going to read it to you tonight from his book and uh, trust that it will be a, a blessing to you. He says, and I, and I read, <clears throat> I often explain baptism by holding my pen in a vertical position and explaining to them that Jesus died in a vertical position, which frankly, or a ver vertical, I'm, I'm going horizontal, this is vertical. I would hold my ink pen vertical and explain that Jesus died in a vertical position, which frankly is very unusual. He says, and, and I agree, this is true with myself as well, it has often fallen our lot as ministers of the gospel 
to be present when some folks have passed away, when they've died. I have never attended or been present when someone died, that they died in a vertical position. They've always died in a horizontal position. Jesus died in a vertical position. He was suspended upright, hanging between the heaven and the earth with his arms outstretched. His anguish eyes looked down at the masses at the foot of the cross until he finally breathed his last breath. His body then was taken down off the cross and was quickly wrapped in a shroud and was buried. Rob Morgan says, at that point I take my pen and I move it from vertical to horizontal. He was laid on a slab of rock in a borrowed tomb, Rob Morgan says, and of course that's the Bible teaches that. And three days later, he rose again. And Rob Morgan says, I take my pen and I move it back to the vertical position. When somebody receives Christ as their Savior, they're acknowledging the fact that they are a sinner and that Jesus died for their sins and that he was buried, but he rose again. Paul is teaching us in the passage that I read to you at the last that you and I, as a symbol through baptism, we are symbolizing the death of the burial, the resurrection of Christ. We are symbolizing as we go into the water vertically. We are buried with him in baptism. And we are raised to walk in the newness of life. My dear friend, tonight if you've been saved, if you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have never followed him in baptism, I trust that you will. I trust you'll give this some thought and some prayer and that you will realize that this is biblical, that this is basic, and this was very beneficial for you to follow Christ in baptism. Now, like I said, Wednesday night, Lord willing, I'm going to continue this uh, study on baptism by answering some common questions that people have concerning baptism. And so I hope you'll join us at 6 o'clock uh, on Wednesday evening to be able to continue this study together. Hey, before we go, let's pray. Father of God, I thank you that we've had this time together tonight. Thank you for the ordinance of baptism. And, uh, Lord, I do pray that, uh, that if there's those that have received you as Christ, as their Savior, but have never followed you in baptism, they'll do that. And that they'll take this uh, seriously and follow your example. And that they would be baptized uh, in water as you have taught your disciples and for us to follow, to be buried in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Thank you for our time together. Meet needs of our people and those that are watching tonight. I pray you give us all a great week uh, this week together as uh, we uh, serve you and you just keep us all safe and healthy and, and it'll be a, a great week that you are going to bless us with. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I trust you will have a great week and I look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, Wednesday night right here on Facebook Live as we uh, continue this study. Hey, and again, don't, don't forget, don't forget, we enter into phase two next Sunday, June the 14th, uh, morning worship service at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary, and then the addition of the 6.30 worship service uh, in the sanctuary. And uh, both of those services will be live here on the Facebook page also on our website, and then archived to YouTube. And so uh, I invite you to share, I invite you to watch, and, uh, and join us. But we're excited that we're gradually opening the church uh, building more and more, 
And so if you feel comfortable, I hope you'll come and be with us in, in our services together uh, next Sunday. But until then, Lord willing, I'll see you Wednesday night right here on, on Facebook. God bless you. You have a wonderful rest of this evening and a great week in the Lord Jesus. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.